I'm divorced. Uh, I was divorced when my son was five. We split, separated. My daughter's six, he was five. And um, very contentious, it's always, and it's still contentious to this day. Um, her grandparents, um, I saw like my children's grandparents, on the mother's side, we were at my daughter's tennis match. By this time, my son's 10, 11. He's growing up to be that man that needs to start to be a young man. Well, the grandparent, in an attempt to try to keep the son away from me during these things, you know, they do these microaggressions, death by a thousand cuts. They won't let the kid just roam and be free. So my son's 10, damn near 11. The grandmother takes my son and puts the son on her lap. That's her attempt to destroy him as a man. I don't know, remember when you were 10, did you wanna sit on your damn grandmama's lap? You might be thinking as a parent, well, that ain't that bad. Go back to when you were 10. You were probably fifth grade. Did you wanna be sitting on your grandmother's lap in public? That's a emasculation tactic that people use, but it wasn't towards to emasculate him, it was to punish me. But she was willing to emasculate him by doing that. So I said, no, you're not going to be sitting on anybody's lap from this point forward. And I got them from that situation. They called the police on me because that was inciting, that was some sort of violation of custody order and so forth and so on. This is how women emotionally punish young men to get back at the father. Then later on when I say, well, fuck all this shit, I don't want to, oh, he left. That would be the story, he left. See, this is how men get out of these situations. You don't fight hard enough. We don't put up with all that microaggressions. And then when they do a microaggression and I say, well, she had my son sitting on his grandmother's lap. What's wrong with that? We can't lead. We need you to lead, but not like that. You see, you get stuck in this paradox of emotional bullshit that we've allowed as men. We've allowed this stuff, okay? And so the mother will cre create this close bond with the child, but the child won't be allowed to create this bond with the father. This is called, and Sigmund Freud, whether you like him or not, called this a part of the Oedipus complex. And we're gonna go through a couple of stages. He has five stages. We're not gonna go through them specifically, but we're gonna highlight a portion of the Oedipus complex that you might need to be aware of. I'm gonna get there in a second. Okay, so according to Freud, a child must overcome conflict at each stage of his sexual development because that's what we're doing. We're maturing sexually, okay? And this is for him to be able to develop healthy sexual desires and behaviors. Now, this is actually true. Most of his context was related around sexuality. People are uncomfortable about that because we live in a Puritan society where we actually, we actually believe that sex doesn't happen. The stork delivers babies. Like, we kind of try to avoid the conversation of sexuality, which actually stunts our growth, but I get why people try to protect people, but we go too far with it. And Sigmund Freud was, talking about these sexual relationships and desires as either healthy or unhealthy. And I can pretty much attest that people have a lot of unhealthy sexual behaviors. And that comes from lack of maturity. Pimp culture, that's some single mom, son, husband bullshit. Cause much of the stuff that they display and prioritize is around sex. That sex makes them the man, okay? Many of these pimps wear flashy clothes like women. They have hairstyles like women. They value jewelry and shoes and bullshit like women. And when I tell people this, ooh, people get mad at me because we uphold this individual in our society as some, having some sort of success. But he's actually an addition of the son. She, he's an extension of the mother, son, husband, surrounded by aunts that like to get perms. And he was a young boy watching this and them being happy about perming their hair. And so his dumb ass, gets in there and he perms his hair to fit in, or he braids it in cornrows, which in the 90s was a male's hairstyle. In the 80s, it was a girl's hairstyle. But because men didn't have fathers around, their little sisters, 
the aunts, mama and grandmama braided the son's hair. Now I know there's cultures that have braids and all of that shit and long hair and short hair. In that example, that ex is an extension of an absent father. Okay, now, in the Oedipus complex, it says right here, when the Oedipus complex is not successfully resolved during the phallic stage, an unhealthy fixation can develop and remain. It says right here, this leads to boys becoming fixated on their mothers and then girls being fixated on the father. It says right here, and this causes them to choose romantic partners that resemble the opposite sex parent as adults. How many guys have said, I want a woman just like my mother? The fuck? That's kind of weird. You know what I mean? Because I never would look at my mother as a romantic partner. Now, maybe you might be talking about everything else, but if I choose a partner sexually, I would have to actually go there with that partner. And if she's like my mom? Hmm. We also do this with, with daughters as well, okay? She'll end up choosing a man just like her father, right? We kind of do that as well. And that's what uh, Sigmund Freud was talking about. Now, here's where the problem leads. Here's where the problem leads. So there's Newport dad trying to get in again. Dad, you trying to come back? He trying to come back all the time. All right, so anyway, he comes back when I get drafted in the NBA. <laughs> and then he's like, son, million dollar son. Okay, but uh, here we go. Now, it says right here, when, it, when, when the boy is between the age of three and six, this is development, he becomes unconsciously sexually attracted to his mother. I know that's uncomfortable, but he was just breastfeeding on the woman, okay? So we have to understand that this is actually happens. And he may become hostile towards the father and looks at the father as a rival. I'll give you an example because it sounds weird. But if you've ever had children and a wife or a girlfriend and your children were around, they were young, three to six, and you went to your wife and you gave her a kiss, what would the kid typically do? Clap or try to break that shit up? The kid would probably look, that's my mom. She's mine. And he might break that up. No, you can't be kissing on that. No, 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 no. What is this? I'll give you another example. If you ask a young kid in this age, who do they want to marry? Who are they going to say? If it's a, the son, he'll say, I want to marry mommy. If it's a daughter, I want to marry daddy. Why? That's their world. That's all they can see. When they go out in public, everybody other than mom and dad is stranger danger. They're almost invisible. This is why kids will do dumb shit and run out in front of people and they don't see nothing but mom and dad. So they become fixated with mom and dad. They don't know anything about sexual dynamics between two people. They know nothing. They just want to marry mom. Your son just want to marry his mama. If you're in a custody battle and the child's between that age and you move out to another place and the son has to be dropped off for your custody exchange, that kid might cry, I miss my mama. And then the mom's like, see, he don't even want to go over there. This is because they have this fixation with the mom and vice versa, the daughter with the dad, okay? And sometimes this is actually used to, used against the dad. He doesn't like to be around the dad. He cries when he's with the dad. See, these are something that happened. Here's the thing right here. Envy and jealousy are aimed at the father. This is in reference to the son. He may become jealous of the father and envious of the father because he has a close attachment with the mom. He may want to break that up. And the father is the object of the mother's affection and attention. He, sh she, he should be. <laughs> We're kind of getting away from that as well, but that's a whole nother conversation. So if the father has a good sexual or healthy relationship with the mother, the, the son might, hey, what's going on here? Okay, that's my woman. <laughs> I came from her, right? I, I get fed through her. And it's right here, these feelings for the mother and rivalry towards the father, it leads to fantasizing him getting rid of the father. And then taking the place 
of the father. You don't like your daddy, do you? He mean to you, huh? He spanks you. He disciplines you. Yeah, mommy, we don't need his ass. Okay. Oh, he don't like the father. And then this can happen. Okay. Some people have this hyper experience. Some people have it micro. But this is actually what happens in our culture. Now, this is the important part. Thank you.